Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Diamond Dog Training. So you are going to get a new puppy. It's so exciting to bring a new puppy into your home, but you have another dog. So you have to think about the other dog as well. How are you going to introduce the new puppy to your dog? You certainly don't want your dog to be jealous. You don't want the new puppy to be hurt accidentally because they're playing too rough. So just how do you accomplish bringing a new puppy into your home. We're gonna give you lots of tips to help you so that your dog and your new puppy can live and be best friends. First tip is think about your own dog, your dog's personality. Does your dog like to play with other dogs or do they just ignore them? Do they have much experience playing with other dogs? When your dog plays, is he rough or does he play gently? All those things will factor into how you set up for your puppy. If you have a dog of a huge different size, like this Irish Wolfhound as compared to this Chihuahua, you know you have to do a lot of management. If you have two dogs of the same breed, like these Australian Shepherds, the adult and the puppy, they're gonna be able to play together a lot sooner than dogs of different sizes and play styles. If you have a dog that is an older dog, you're gonna to have to protect your older dog from the puppy jumping on them. As you see this elderly Siberian Husky and this puppy Siberian Husky, you don't want the puppy to jump on the older dog and hurt them because then the older dog will get angry and possibly snap and there won't be as good a relationship between the puppy and your older dog. My second suggestion is to set up your house at least two weeks before the puppy arrives so that your dog gets used to the whole different setup. If you just move everything around the night before the puppy comes, it's going to cause some anxiety in your dog to see everything changed around. So, And what do you set up? You definitely need gates. You want to make an area for your puppy that your adult dog cannot reach unless you are supervising. So you have a gate, you have a crate for the puppy if you're going to use a crate, either a plastic crate or a wire crate. You are going to have a puppy pen for the puppy. And I believe you should have a second barrier. So if your puppy's in a puppy pen, you're going to need another wire pen or if your puppy's in a crate with a wire pen around it because you don't want your dog to be able to go all the way to the puppy and maybe the puppy reaches out and paws them with a paw and your dog snaps. You want a double barrier. Set up your house early so your dog gets comfortable. Then you'll be ready for the arrival of the puppy. My third tip is when you are talking to the breeder, if you know which puppy is yours, then ask the breeder to take a soft towel and rub the puppy down really well, and then put the towel in a plastic bag and seal it. Send it to you. When you take the towel out of the plastic bag, put it down on the floor, put some treats in a line up to the towel, and then put some treats on the towel. Encourage your dog to eat the treats, walk up to the towel, and sniff the towel. This is the first time that your dog gets an opportunity to actually get to know the new puppy. The day the puppy arrives is always a big day. Everybody's really excited. Maybe you have to drive to get the puppy or pick the puppy up wherever you are. And when you get back, see if someone else can hold the puppy. Go inside and play with your dog. You'll have the smell of the puppy all over you. Let your dog smell you. And he's already smelled the towel, so he gets a little better idea of who this intruder is. And play with your dog, give him lots of exercise, give him an opportunity to know that you love him. After you've given your dog exercise and played with them and given him lots of love and cuddles, then put a leash on your dog and walk outside. Ask the person who's been holding the puppy to also bring the puppy and go to the other side of the street and you 
with your dog and the person with the puppy are going to take a walk. You're going to walk parallel and just walk down the street for a few driveways and then turn around and walk back. When you're coming back, see if you can get a little closer so that you are maybe six feet apart, but you're still walking parallel. Every time your dog looks over at the person with the puppy, ask your dog to look, just like you see with this dog in the picture looking up at the owner. I'll put a card up above that shows you how to teach your dog to look at you. When you get back to the house, ask your friend to take the puppy inside the house and put them in the puppy pen. Make sure there is a double barrier between the puppy pen and your dog. When the puppy is in the house, walk in with your dog. As you walk toward the puppy, watch your dog's reaction. If they get really excited, ears forward, tail up, if they're barking, if they're stiff, then you know you can't go very close to that puppy. Give yourself some space, back away, and that's all the closer you're gonna get to the puppy at the moment. You might say, oh, this is silly. Just put the dog with the puppy and everything will be fine, but that's not the case. And I know I got a comment recently from a person who said, my dog is trying to bite the puppy. I can't have them together. What do I do? Help. Well, what we're trying to do here is prevent that so that your dog has plenty of time to get familiar with the puppy before they're ever together. Because puppies are clueless. Your puppy might jump on your dog. They might bite at your dog. So your dog has to really feel comfortable with the puppy in their house because the puppy is the intruder before you ever let them say hello to one another. If you walk in the house and your dog is calm and they're wagging their tail and very relaxed, then walk over close to the second barrier and let your dog see the puppy. Call your dog's name, get them to look at you. When they do, give them a treat. Or you can just simply give them a treat for being there in the presence of the puppy. You want your dog to think, wow, this is good. Every time I see the puppy, I'm gonna get a treat. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll receive all the episodes. Let them know that there's the puppy, there's a treat. It's good for them to have the puppy around. You can walk a little closer, give them another treat. So your dog is getting to know that this puppy is great for them. By that time, both your dog and your puppy are probably very tired, so separate them, let them relax. This first step with your dog and your puppy, maybe just a couple days, or it might be a couple weeks, depends on your dog. You're the one who knows your dog's personality. When your dog is doing really well and calm around the second barrier, then it's time to remove it so that your dog can get close to the puppy. At this point now, your dog can walk right up to the puppy, put their nose right at them. So make sure you're watching the body language. Is your dog relaxed? Or are they stiff? Are there, is their body stiff? Is their tail straight up? Are their ears forward? Then you know you need to increase the distance again. But if they walk up very nicely, wag their tail, put their nose through to the puppy, then you know that things are going well. Now you see the picture here of the Doberman and the puppy in the big crate. That's what I mean by you have to make sure that your, your dog, your adult dog, that you can trust your big dog right up close to the puppy before you ever allow that to happen. Now you can sit on the floor, you can feed your dog a treat, you can feed the puppy a treat through the puppy playpen, and your dogs are learning to be together. Now probably both your dog and the puppy are tired, so let your puppy relax in their playpen like you see this little dog in the playpen. And also give your puppy a Kong so they have something to work on. Also, give your dog a chew or a Kong to help them relax. Now you can sit on the floor and you can have the puppy on one side of the gate as you see with the little Italian Greyhound 
and you can have your dog on the mat, as you see. And you can make sure that you feed the puppy first because you're telling your dog, here is the puppy's getting a treat. So now your dog gets a treat. So you are pairing good things with the puppy. The puppy means good things to your dog. So you can continue, feed the puppy, feed your dog. If you can, and your dog will, is comfortable, you could give your dog a Kong on the mat, you could go into the pen or, or behind the gate, play with the puppy. So your dog knows that when you're playing with the puppy, you are giving your dog a reward of a Kong. Everything to help your dog believe that the best thing in the world that's happened is this puppy coming into their home. And they're never gonna be jealous. Take your time, don't rush the introduction. But when you think you're ready, take the puppy out of the pen, have your dog on a leash. Maybe someone else can hold the leash for you, or you hold the leash and have someone else hold the puppy. But as you sit with the puppy in your arms, present the rear of the puppy to your dog. What you're looking for is they just come up, they sniff, and they back away. It's no big deal. When all that goes well, your puppy can be playing with a toy and let them come up again, praise them for all that good sniff, and away. So now you think, okay, it's time to have my puppy and my dog interact. I was watching a video recently of a Labrador Retriever breeder, and she was saying, well, I wouldn't put the puppy with this one because he's too rambunctious, and yes, I could use this one, but this is the one I'll choose. But you see, she has three dogs to choose from, so she can choose the best dog. You only have one dog to choose from. You have to make certain that your dog and your puppy have had time to develop a good relationship before you actually allow them to play. Now comes the big moment and you're going to allow your dog to play with the puppy. Look for body language, make sure everybody is loose and happy and no growling and no stiffness. Because if there is, you wanna separate. But here is a lovely picture of a greyhound playing with an Italian greyhound. I'll talk about a size difference. But you can see how gentle this greyhound is being with the puppy. The dog's mouth is wide open, play bowing. You can see this video of the two dogs playing. The adult dog is on the ground laying down and the puppy is playing and wrestling. This is good play. And here is a second video of the two dogs continuing to play. Now if the puppy gets a little too bitey then it's okay if the adult dog corrects. You want your adult dog to correct but it's a measured correction. It's never a full force bite, and it's always just to tell the puppy, hey, you, you bit me a little too hard. Most dogs will just get up and walk away if the puppy bites too hard, which is what you see here with the dog and the litter of puppies, where the dog is starting to play with them and then just turns around and walks away like, nope, not playing with you. When they are playing nicely, they still need to be separated. They each need to have their own time with you. Puppy in the puppy pen, and the puppy can learn to be in the crate or the puppy pen while you play with the adult dog. Your adult dog still needs lots of attention. When you need to leave the house, put the puppy in a separate room with a door closed. In the puppy pen, like you see here with the, the two puppies in the wire pen, that keeps them safe from your other dog. Not that your dog might try to hurt them, but they might climb out of the puppy pen. And your dog and the puppy would be playing unsupervised. Or your dog might get too excited and push over the puppy pen and hurt the puppy. So keep that door closed and keep your puppy separate from your other dog when you're not there to supervise. 
Here's a picture of a greyhound sniffing an Italian greyhound puppy, and the Italian greyhound has rolled over on its back. That's good. That's the kind of play you want, that the greyhound and the Italian greyhound are playing nicely, but the Italian greyhound puppy still realizes that the greyhound is in charge. Take the time to have your dog and your new puppy develop a good relationship and you will have dogs that are friends for life. If you have not gotten your puppy yet, here's a video. Questions to ask breeders. Watch this before you talk to a breeder. That will give you ideas. Also, if you already have your puppy, here is a playlist on puppy biting. Please remember, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you won't miss any of the episodes. And leave me some comments. Thank you. Have a great day from Diamond Dog Training and Joyce. Bye-bye.